Hey Pfingsters! So what are the recommended ways to start as a freelance developer on, um, online? So if you want to start your freelance developing business online, you think about becoming a freelance developer, creating this well-rounded skill set of a practitioner, uh, learn and get paid in the process and uh, yeah, just learn also master the business side of things. So maybe you think about like scaling up your business online and maybe you want to participate in the global uh, freelancing trend. So the major freelancing platforms grow double digits per year for 10 years or more now. So it's like a, it's a disruptive trend. So uh, there are many reasons to go into the freelancing space. But in this video I want to uh, quickly show you three ways of getting started as a freelance developer online. So the first way is to, um, to go to Fiverr fiverr.com and create a number of gigs and then you have to wait and as you wait you still create more gigs and more gigs and more gigs so you start creating more type of gigs because on fiverr you create um, gigs and you wait until people hire you for these gigs okay so it's a, a pull based mechanism the freelancer creates a gig and the clients they they uh, go to the freelancer so the freelancer basically pulls clients clients to to himself so this is like the overall idea of fiverr and so this is the first way to just create a fiverr account and start creating gigs until you get hired then you um, you finish the gigs and like say for example write a blog article and the gig value is say thirty dollars and then you finish the gig you get paid thirty dollars get a good rating hopefully and then the next gig will be become faster, will become easier to attract and so on. Okay, And then you just stay in the game focusing on Fiverr until you get a lot of gigs. And there's an 80-20 distribution in the, in the clients you get for the gigs. So if you create say 10 gigs, then 2 gigs will attract 80% of the clients. And this means that if you are an 80-20 thinker, you must focus on the 2 gigs and you must create more of the kind more of the, these two types of gigs. Say you create another 10 gigs um, that are similar to the two gigs that perform best. And then again, in these 10 gigs, you will again have an 80-20 distribution. So two of the, of the gigs um, that are already in the 20% um, have uh, produced 20%, uh, 80% of the 80% of the results, okay, and so on. So it's like, uh, it's a fractal thing so therefore you have to create you have to keep creating gigs try out different things focus on the gigs that work best and just stay in the game until you get a lot of good ratings and until you get more work than you can handle and at, the, at this point you can gradually increase your prices and increase your hourly earnings in the process okay so this is the first excellent way uh, fiverr is growing double digits per year so it's a good platform to start with the second one is upwork and this is actually the the way i recommend for a freelance developer in 2020 upwork is the biggest freelancing market on the planet it also crossed double digits it crossed a bit uh, slightly f slower than fiverr but it, but it starts at a, at a higher base okay so it's a, it's a it's a global the number one freelancing market and upwork is just the other way around so the clients create the gig and the freelancers apply for the gigs and therefore this is one of the main reasons why i recommend upwork um, because you have control over client acquisition and this is of course an excellent position to be in so you don't want to make hope uh, your business strategy yeah? hope should never be a business strategy so you should not um, be forced to hope and wait for clients to hire you this is like this is a bond problem i see uh, on fiverr and on upwork you can just apply for more gigs apply for more gigs until so you apply for as many gigs as you need until you get your first gig and then you finish the first gig so you have complete control over your success on the platform and also um, i say i would say that the earning potential is larger on upwork the hourly rate why because Fiverr came, like culturally, came from this $5 gig, so very small gigs. So they also offer um, uh, much higher paid gigs now. So they have left this niche of uh, gigs for $5. But it's still culturally, clients expect to pay, to do this small, kind of very small gigs on Fiverr. And they end, like real businesses, like large corporations, they start to hire 
um, more and more freelance developers on Upwork, so on the big platforms, because there you can have hourly contracts and so on. So it's like a bit more advanced, more business to business, and therefore the earning potential is higher. And so therefore this is the recommended way, I would say. So even if you are a complete beginner, it's great to start on Upwork, to start with a low hourly rate and then just gradually increase your hourly rate as you get more and more clients, more and more ratings over time. Okay, so and then the third way is to just don't do anything with the platforms, just create your own funnel. It's uh, like you have complete freedom now about this. You can, for example, set up your web, web page, just a landing page, one page, uh, uh, so like a one page website where you just, uh, um, you, you have a video maybe for, uh, describing your services, you you create your portfolio, like say a GitHub profile, where you link to the GitHub profile, and then you just need to convert clients, so you need to create your own funnel. Say you have an email sign-up form, then you have an email autoresponder, so if clients want to hire you, they get autoresponders, or maybe it's just a contact form uh, to start with, and then you need to drive traffic to this site, so where you sell your services, say you want to um, do some back-end development with Python Django, and then you have like a domain djangofreelancer.com and then you maybe do some advertising to get clients to the to your site and just sell your services right away. And the earning potential is uh, highest for this type of uh, freelancing services. And I would also say that this is a this should be your long term goal. So your long term goal should be to 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 leave the uh, the freelancing platforms because they take a 20% cut. Um, and also you are more a commodity on this platform. So, but if you have your own website, your own funnel, then of course you can, you are not a commodity. So there are many clients that want to work with you that visit your website and that, um, that book you like, you can, you can create a powerful niche, um, uh, and a powerful positioning as a, like, and you can, can position yourself as a consultant and get paid uh, higher hourly rates in the process. So this is like the third way, and this, is, this should be your ultimate goal. So, but if you're just starting out, I would say start with Upwork, already build your, your website and try to like, move clients out of the bl <laughs> Upwork platform. So you start with Upwork, you build your client base on Upwork, but then you ask them whether you can uh, get paid outside of Upwork. And over time, you will create your client list, clients that hire you again and again. If you de deliver more value than you are getting paid for, and you will cr create your thriving online business over time. Okay, so this is an excellent opportunity in 2020. Um, as I said, the freelance platforms are out to disrupt the work environment in the 21st century. So if you want to participate, then check out my new book, Leaving the Red Race with Python. I give a link in the description below. Also check out my uh, freelancer course and free webinar where I show you how to build your high income skill Python through freelancing. Thanks for listening and see you in the next video. Bye.